Hey everybody, it's Mike with Monkey Fab. Welcome back. We're going to go ahead and finish off the titanium intake. In this episode, uh, we last left off, we were just tacking it all up and getting ready to move forward, but I had to put a pause on it because I, I needed a coupler so I can ensure the spacing was right before we finished welding the tab on the mounting tab on it. So in this episode, we'll uh, get the titanium intake all finished up and installed on the car. So kick back and enjoy. Thanks for dropping in. Whoop. So there we go. It's all tacked up and what we'll do is just try it one last time. Uh, make sure, you know, things didn't move around. We tacked it up and then we'll be ready to weld it out. So it's a good fit. It's a tight fit, you know, it's like a quarter inch clearance all around, but that's usually how things go. So I've just been marking the top side so I can just keep track of it, and that will also help me when I go to start welding since I've never welded um, titanium before. I'll weld this part down here uh, first, and because this is obviously going to show. So if I make any mistakes or there's a learning curve, learning curve will be done way down the bumper, uh, you know, so there probably won't be a whole lot of people that ever see that. And then, the, you know, hopefully I'll be better by the time we get up here. Or I'll do awesome down here because I'm fresh and it'll be all worn out and do crappy when you get up here. You never know. I'm going to switch to a uh, 20 gas lens. This is the GLS 20 cup. I sell these cups in case you guys are interested. They're really great. Um, great gas coverage and they made a tough one. So if you drop them, they don't break. So, as exciting as this is for me, and it is, I doubt that it's really all that exciting for you. So, um, here's what we got so far. Can I focus on this? I'm not sure how to use this quite yet. So, I think I'm getting the dabbing right. You see these last few over here. It's kind of a little wide, but kind of, kind of, kind of similar, uh, uh, symmetrical and uh, kind of evenly spaced is what I want. So I want to get the same width and the same spacing all the way around is kind of what I'm shooting for. So uh, 
I think I'm on the right track. I think we're doing things okay. There's a little bit of discoloration on the outside. I don't know if I'm going to be able to control that. But uh, we'll do the best we can. And uh, I like the way it's going. Yeah. Okay, so after... Shoot, it must have been... Three, three and a half hours to weld this thing out. We got it finished. A lot of pie cuts, a lot of welds. So, uh, like, I can see I started here on this side, and it was kind of, it was a steep learning curve to this stuff. Um, but I just kind of, as I went, just kind of worked through. You see, here's towards the end, and it was getting fairly consistent here. It's kind of hard to tell if you can see that, but what you want is basically the same width and the, the little beads, the dabs, being the same distance kind of apart. And you kind of got that sorted out by the end, so they were looking pretty decent. It was a bit touch and go at the beginning, and uh, can you see in there? Can't really see in there. So, uh, yeah, it turned out pretty good. Um... What I did is I settled on, in case you, you, you care, uh, I'll show you my settings. I wrote them down. What I do when I find a good setting is I write it down on my on my uh, welder. That way I know what I got. And I usually write my save programs down so I can go to them real quick. But on the titanium, it was uh, a number 20 GLS cup with 58 amps. Uh, the pulse was 40, the duration 33, the background 40. And it was my speed glass set at 11 and 30 CFH. So, uh, so, um, the, I think the biggest thing that made the, uh, the biggest difference was when I, I was on like a 10 setting on the, um, on my lens and I bumped it up to 11 just to see how I did. I usually weld like around 10. I don't like to keep my lens that dark, um, but that was a total game changer. So when I went to 11, suddenly I could see the puddle real well and I and that way it was easy to keep that consistency. Um, and another thing I noticed with the titanium was, uh, so the, the filler is really sticky. It, it just like, if you, if you kind of feed like the front edge of the puddle, um, which is normal. I, I, I think most people do that. Uh, it, 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 the titanium chills the, 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 the puddle so quickly that it sticks into it. Um, so what I settled on was taking the tungsten and, and going a little bit higher than I usually would. And then just dropping the, the, the filler almost right directly under the tungsten in between the tungsten and the, uh, and the titanium so it just like and that was like butter as soon as I figured that out like go a little bit higher and just feed right to the center of that puddle then it was it was you know smooth and I, there was no stickiness so you can give those settings a try if you're you know doing titanium for the first time and uh, and see how it goes for you it was pretty fun I enjoyed it it was a lot of work uh, to deal with you know make sure it was all clean and tacked up well and back purge and the pie cuts instead of bins you know i'm all i'm all about bins because these things just took forever to weld but it was a good learning experience and you know i encourage you guys to to give it a shot uh tycon is who i got this from and they have a kit i believe it's like 20 bucks and i don't know if they're shipping on it or not but you can get like a go practice welding kit and it comes with maybe a couple rods of filler and uh some titanium pies or cuts or whatever and you can get going on uh, willing that so you can try my settings out and see if you like them or if you find something better just uh, drop them down in the comments and uh, I'd like to see I'd like to see what you guys got all right so there we go it is in its home and like I said I got a nice um you know, a nice uh, four ply black coupler coming in to stick on there. So that's just, you know, holding it in place for me while we get everything mocked up. We see we zoomed right down there. We didn't really come close to much of anything. I'm actually, actually turned out to be uh, more clearance than I originally intended, uh, or not intended, but thought we'd have. So 
Um, it's just kind of sitting there right now, but that filter obviously will, you know, go on there and bolt on. I think what we'll do now is what I referred to like 27 times is just make a tab um, to come up to here. So from down here, this bolt that you can see right there is the back of, I think, the horn. <laughs> and it's just a little six, I think six by six by one uh, thread. And I got a nut that fits that fine. So I think if we just come up here and just tack it, uh, just weld it onto the pipe, make a nice radius, and that'll just keep it kind of in position and from hobbling and bobbling around. All right, I just thought I'd give you kind of a better, better view here. If it's focused, I don't know. That kind of gives you an all inclusive view of how it goes there and ends up in the air box so what I'm gonna do now is grab a piece of cardboard and stare and look that's really what most fabrication is is just standing there with a piece of cardboard in your hand staring at shit and then we'll try to make it happen all right so we got some some CAD board going on right about no and that's pretty good. You can see I kind of put a radius on it. Let's take a walk. Check out my rod. Your rabbits and squirrels and bees and shit. This is the 78 Pahonix. Just in case you've only been tuning in because this is a BRZ video and you're a BRZ guy, so. This is 58,000 original miles, and, yep, that's right, it's got that intercooler going on, and a 5.3, and a little billet wheeled turbo, bench seats, so, yeah, man, one day. As soon as we get done with this, I think this is the next come in. We're gonna get it finished. It's driving me crazy not having that thing done. All right, so we're starting to get into the dark time of day. It's winter time, so it gets dark around five-ish or so. So there's a piece bolted in, and you see kind of the nice little. Can I stick this down here? There. And you can see kind of the the radius on the top there and that should lay right in the pipe and that should put us right where we need to be. I had it in backwards of course but uh, that's kind of what it's going to do um, like I said so we can make sure the spaces are right I'm going to wait till that coupler gets in so that's about as far as we go on that pipe tonight. So it's probably worth pointing out that I had uh, put painters tape over the turbo here and then this little silicone ring around the painter's tape to kind of keep it all in place. And what that does is keep any bullshit from dropping down into the turbo because you wouldn't want that. And then the last thing you want to do is just kind of give a little spinny spin and make sure everything's turning freely because we were messing with the housing. And sometimes you can accidentally, I don't know about these new ones, they look like they're, you know, I, I would bet that they're probably built to kind of avoid those problems where, you know, with this V-band and it pulling itself together in the seating. But some of them, uh, if you mess with it and you kind of cock, you can actually cock this uh, a little bit and uh, it'll bind up the turbine, uh, the, 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 uh, the actual impeller will get bound up against the housing. And uh, that's a bad thing, especially if you got a really expensive turbo. So anyway, just double check it. Make sure everything's good to go. And then we got these cool Super 4 ply couplers. You guys thought I was going to put some shitty blue ones on there, huh? And probably don't need the 4 ply just because, like, <laughs> because, uh, you know, there's no pressure right there. It's just an intake, so it's just atmospheric. But, you know, why not? Why not overdo it a little bit? And once again, we're back with the uh, titanium intake that we made.
Okay, so there we go. We're in the coupler. I need to turn this around so I can see. And there's our tab. And the only job of that tab is just kind of keeping that as a, as a third point, which will keep our air filter in the box like we need it to. So I actually have quite a bit of play all the way around. Um, and that titanium is kind of flimsy, which is good because it's not going to hurt it to be able to move around a little bit right there. It'll also help us install it and take it out. So uh, I'm just going to mark down there where uh, it touches and then we'll just go in there and tack it on. All right, so after much trials and tribulations, we got that that guy buttoned up. It goes down to meow, and it's nice and snug. And uh, yeah, man. So that wraps up the intake and the cold air box for the BRZ. And don't let the 20 minute video fool you. That was just hours and hours of welding. And I probably tacked that tab on like 30 times uh, to get it right, to get it to actually fit. It was pretty complex. But we got all in there and it's getting close to being finished now. Uh, so I appreciate you guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And if you got any questions, just drop them down in the comments box. And again, thanks for tuning in.